Well, folks, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and today we have four different news stories we're going to be talking about. Well, one of the news stories sort of has like three stories involved with it because it deals with the Super Mario movie and its incredible launch. Oh my gosh, it is setting records in several countries and has already become, well, so far at least at launch, the best launched video game adaption movie of all time. But we're going to get into that because obviously we don't have the full five-day launch numbers and we won't have that until about Monday or Tuesday. That means that we also have news on Final Fantasy. We got some stuff going on with emulators and Xbox and Nintendo's involvement in all of this and more. Before we get into this, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. And if we somehow get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we're going to be giving away a Zelda Switch Edition OLED. We're also going to be giving away... Well, why not the collector's edition for Tears of the Kingdom as well? A pin set and more. We're working with a couple companies to try to sweeten the deal so more people win. You guys are awesome. Thank you for tuning in, and let's get into this news. Now, the first bit of news we need to talk about is how the Super Mario Bros. movie has been performing since it launched on Wednesday. According to Deadline, the Super Mario Bros. movie has had an incredible first day, earning 66.4 million worldwide, with 34.7 million of those profits originating from the movie's international release. Said international release broke records in 10 different countries, including the best opening day for any animated film in the UK and Spain. So it's up there competing with the best of the best. The Super Mario Bros. movie has garnered plenty more impressive overseas records within its first day in theaters. The film became Universal's best opening day of all time in Mexico and Germany, as well as the biggest opening day for Illumination in Taiwan and Australia. Mario's animated film feature debut has also been good for the Chinese box office, becoming the highest grossing animated film from Hollywood in the country since COVID-19 pandemic began in 2020. Current estimates expect Mario to dominate the box office during the film's five-day Easter opening weekend, with projections upwards of $200 million worldwide. This includes $125 million domestically, which would almost certainly put the Super Mario Bros. movie at the top of the weekly box office if it were to earn that much. Given how many Easter eggs to the Mario franchise have been littered throughout the promotional material, it's clear Illumination wants audiences to come back for multiple viewings and to try to spot them all. Now, again, this information we got right off of Screen Rant, who is sourcing Deadline. I'm honestly just really, really happy uh, to see the Mario movie perform well. But we're not really done with that Mario movie news because, well, it turns out that Shigeru Miyamoto can't help but keep talking about Nintendo and Illumination. And now we're getting this bit of news right off of Nintendo Life, and it says it's still in the early days, but the Super Mario Bros. movie is already shaping up to be a huge success based on industry predictions and early box office data. For Nintendo and Illumination, it means the partnership will likely continue on. During an interview with Screen Rant, Nintendo Shigeru Miyamoto confirmed this, mentioning how he was sure the two companies would stick together going forward. Illumination CEO and founder Chris Melodondri reaffirmed this, going on to describe the partnership with Nintendo as a really rewarding collaboration. He also noted how he had previously been invited to join the Nintendo Board of Directors and said the companies were already working together into the future. So that's obviously really, really good. Uh, no surprise there that they're going to continue to work with Illumination, especially given the success of the Mario movie. We're likely going to get a sequel. We're going to probably get other uh, Nintendo movies as well eventually. Maybe Donkey Kong, maybe a Toad movie, uh, maybe Zelda someday, Metroid. Who knows where the limits lie? Now, that being said, we need to get into our next piece of news, and this is in regards to Gamescom. For those who don't know what Gamescom is, it's essentially the Electronic Entertainment Expo of Europe, uh, except one that's ran usually significantly better and hasn't had as many controversies or problems. Jeff Keighley has gone out there to announce that Opening Night Live, which is their uh, game-revealing live stream, uh, will return on Tuesday, August 22nd, from uh, Kalamesse in Germany, and I probably butchered the pronunciation of that place, but I just, you know, whatever, the tweet's on screen for you guys. Uh, excited to be back in Cologne with the fans and the industry streaming video game news directly to you. And yes, this does happen after Summer Game Fest and all that other stuff goes down, so any additional uh, announcements for later in the year could possibly happen here, and usually Opening Night Live is pretty cool. Uh, assuming that uh, I can, uh, it's at a time that works for me, I will probably be live stream reacting to opening night live. All right, next up, we have a confirmation of something that I talked about over a year ago at this point, and that is Final Fantasy Pixel 
remaster coming to Nintendo Switch. I actually told you all from a source that this was happening a long time ago, and I had a lot of people doubting me, hating me, saying this didn't age well, yada, 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 and here we are, and just like many things, it aged like fine wine, because Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters is coming to Switch. This is a collection that's already existed on PC, and it includes Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3, Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6. Um, they've all been remastered in their nice pixelated forms, uh, and what's really cool is that they're coming this spring. So they technically announced that these remasters would be coming to PS4 and Nintendo Switch uh, about four months ago, but now we have an exact release date. So they will be releasing at 8 a.m. Pacific time on April 19th. Now, why 8 a.m.? I don't know, but whatever, that's when they're going to be releasing. Now, there was a physical version available very, very shortly, but there were so few copies instantly sold out. People are trying to create enough demand that maybe they do another run of physical copies for PlayStation 4 and Switch. But at this point, you know, it's probably going to be a digital only purchase, but it's, it, it, yeah, I'm just glad to see it coming. And again, it arrives on April 19th. All right, our last story deals with the Xbox. And why are we talking about Xbox Series S and X today? Well, it is because there are reports out there, rumors that Nintendo has banned and or blocked emulation on Xbox. Now look, the Xbox series uh, is well known to be to allow emulators and also have a dev mode where you could probably still access these emulators. But uh, MVG, Modern Vintage Game, put out there saying, hearing reports that Microsoft has blocked em emulators in retail mode, which is the primary mode people play games on. Can't say I'm surprised, uh, but you could stick to dev mode. Well, a person responded to them who has an email from the Xbox QA team uh, and I want to read this email to you because, yeah, Nintendo appears to have been involved heavily in getting these emulators blocked. So it says, hi there. Thanks for getting in touch with us about the recent ban on emulators on the Xbox storefront. We appreciate your interest and concerns. To answer your questions, the primary reason for the ban is related to legal issues with Nintendo. While emulating itself is not illegal, it can be used to play games from consoles that are still under copyright protection without permission, which can create issues with Nintendo and its affiliates. Additionally, we take security seriously, and some emulators require permissions beyond what is typical for an app. This could create a potential security risk, as these permissions can be exploited by bad actors to gain access to sensitive information. For those reasons, we have made the decision to ban emulators on the Xbox storefront. However, we understand that many users have dev mode enabled to run legal emulation. We don't seek to remove this ability as it doesn't grant access to the retail components of the system and is considered safe. Unlike retail emulators, dev mode is limited to certain functionalities and doesn't have system read write functionality. That said, we are still exploring ways to allow safe and legal emulation on Xbox. We are in talks with legitimate emulator developers to bring their software onto our platform while ensuring that all copyright laws and security protocols are followed. We appreciate your understanding and patience as we work through this issue. Our goal is to provide a safe and enjoyable gaming experience for everyone, and we are committed to finding a solution that meets those goals. If you have any further questions or concerns, feel, feel, please feel free to reach out to us. Best regards, and we're not going to obviously get the contact information or the employee information here. So this is obviously where Nintendo, and yeah, the security risk is one thing, but clearly this happened because Nintendo didn't want public-facing emulators to be supported in any sort of way even though them existing is not illegal and even though them existing doesn't mean that people are downloading roms through them right you still gotta you know find your own way to put roms with those emulators i, I it's interesting that nintendo is doing this it's not too shocking uh it was kind of surprising that xbox was so blatant and just allowing emulators right on their storefront that uh, that is definitely something that felt like a pretty bold move. Sony wouldn't even do that. Obviously, Nintendo doesn't. Uh, and now Xbox doesn't either, except if you're in dev mode, which is a completely different mode. And I understand it doesn't give read-write access, which is important for emulation because obviously, hey, you got to write ROMs to, to, to play them and boot them up. Well, you can't do that in dev mode. You have to use like external drives and stuff, which again, doesn't really bother people that you have to do that, but it is just an extra step that isn't just where everything's located on the system and that's sort of how xbox protects themselves legally in those modes is hey if you are using illegally downloaded roms 
they're not located directly on the Xbox in dev mode. So then, you know, it kind of protects Microsoft in that case, and they're just hosting the emulator, and emulators are 100% legal. Now, a lot of people might come at Nintendo over this and, and, and say lots of nasty stuff because Nintendo's been anti-emulation for so long, and it's fair. But also, it was pretty bold of Microsoft to think that Nintendo wouldn't be perturbed by just offering freely, easily available, right in the Xbox store, downloadable emulators that do, you know, in some ways promote piracy. Uh, I know that we don't like to go there because not everyone that emulates is pirating games, but we also can't ignore that that is something that does happen. And, you know, kudos to Xbox for at least not getting rid of them in dev mode. So people, and by the way, Every Xbox Series S and X can be a dev unit. You can enable dev mode, uh, but it's a little, a lot of people like having them not in dev mode because obviously that not having that read write functionality can be a little bit annoying. But anyways, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. All of these stories, pretty amazing. I know guys, look, we went through a video without any Zelda. I almost made it to the end without even mentioning it, but you know what? Hey, we aren't just a Zelda channel, so it's a nice kind of reminder. Uh, there's other things happening in the gaming world, and that's your latest update. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video.